Earlier this year, back in March of last year, Boston Dynamics unveiled its second commercial robot, Stretch. The system, built from its impressive box-moving handle concept, is designed to bring the company's advanced robotics technologies into a warehouse-slash-logistics setting, easily one of the hottest categories in robotics these days. Today the Hyundai-owned firm announced its first commercial customer, and it's a huge one. Logistics giant DHL has committed to a multi-year, $15 million deal, or investment as the parties are referring to it, set to bring the robot to its North American facilities. Specific details on the number of robots being purchased haven't been revealed, but Boston Dynamics says it's going to be bringing a fleet of the robots to DHL logistics centers over the next three years. Stretch will get to work on loading trucks to start, a feature its creators have highlighted as a vital part of its initial rollout. Additional tasks will be added over the course of the rollout in an effort to further automate the package handling process. Says CEO Robert Plater, Stretch is Boston Dynamics' newest robot, designed specifically to remedy challenges within the warehouse space. We are excited to be working with DHL Supply Chain to deliver a fleet of robots that will further automate warehousing and improve safety for its associates. We believe Stretch can make a measurable impact on DHL's business operations, and we're excited to see the robot in action at scale. The partnership will be a key proving ground for Boston Dynamics' commercial ambitions beyond its ongoing spot deployment. Package handling is an intensive, highly repetitive job that requires long hours of work, strain and multiple points of failure. This will be a major test for the company under Hyundai, which has sought to further its commercial ambitions. For DHL, meanwhile, it's an opportunity to automate some logistics roles during a time when blue-collar jobs have proven difficult to keep staffed. It's also a chance to more fully embrace automation as it competes with the likes of Amazon, which has begun steadily encroaching on the package delivery space. Hyundai has some grand ambitions for its robotics development. And thus far, the automaker has been willing to put its money where its mouth is, most notably in the form of its acquisition of Boston Dynamics, which valued the robotics pioneer at north of $1 billion. Robotics are, predictably, taking center stage with the company's CES presentation this week. Last month, Hyundai offered a sneak preview in the form of the mobile eccentric droid, a four-wheel modular mobility platform. Today, the company outlined broader plans for the future with its new metamobility concept. Hyundai will be revealing more information about its strategy, and will be speaking to some executives to get a better idea of what it might look like in practice. For now, the broad idea was presented under the banner of expanding human reach, which aims to find a role for mobility and robotics in a virtual reality metaverse. It's hard to separate the buzzwords from the practical implications at this early stage, but a primary component seems to be the use of hardware to serve as a kind of real-world proxy for VR interactions. For now, Let's just say there are a lot of big promises surrounding a lack of tangibility that has long been a root problem for VR applications. Here's Hyundai Motor Group President Chang Song. The idea behind metamobility is that space, time and distance will all become irrelevant. By connecting robots to the metaverse, we will be able to move freely between both the real world and virtual reality. Going one step further from the immersive be their proxy experience that the metaverse provides, Robots will become an extension of our own physical senses, allowing us to reshape and enrich our daily lives with metamobility. A near-term, plausible use for such technology is using remote teleoperations to control a manufacturing robot. That's something that Toyota has long been exploring with its THR3 system. The company notes that Microsoft Cloud for Manufacturing could serve as a gateway for such remote-controlled work, and it's not too difficult to imagine a system like this serving some practical functionality with radiation sensors that can be used in order to map the uh, level of radiation uh, without having people go into those spaces at all. We are working with the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory who's uh, using our robots to explore autonomies. They have them roaming around tunnels and caverns. We plan to introduce advanced robotic technology into a wide variety of mobility systems from directly into robots themselves, as we've been talking about, but also into cars and into urban air mobility vehicles, and maybe even into machines designed for direct human mobility. You know, our colleagues at Hyundai are exploring the idea of wearable robots. I think here's a, a picture of one of the, uh, of the early models. Uh, they're human exoskeletons, such as VEX, 
that physically work very closely with a human. They sort of, you sort of wear them. Imagine a worker who's doing a repetitive task that's rough on the body, and there, and there are many of these tasks out there uh, in industry. Or even in some cases, make the person into a superhuman person that can lift very heavy loads beyond what uh, a normal person can do. And in the long run, it might be possible for these kinds of robots to help disabled people, giving them mobility and freedom uh, beyond what they can do on their own. Check out the plug and drive module or PND push short. The PND module is all in one solution that combines intelligent steering, braking, and electric drive, and suspension in single wheel unit. We can add mobility to anything just by attaching PND module. It's adaptive, expandable, and matches human needs. That makes configuring spaces on demand possible. This includes living spaces, workplaces, and even retail areas. So now a room can essentially become a one-size-fits-all solution. So it may even change the way that we think about arch architectural layouts. Mm -hmm. The idea would be moving an entire hospital to a disaster location. Places like pop-up stores or community services will come directly to your neighborhood. The PND module will individualize public transportation to meet very specific needs. So cars will evolve from mobility devices into smart devices. Robots are ready and waiting for us to connect to them through the metaverse. In the future metaverse, with the advancement of sensors, actuators, artificial intelligence software and hardware, we'll be able to control and guide our companion robots as if we were actually there. And that's what it means to use robots as physical avatars. Let's say I'm at a future CES show in Las Vegas. With my physical avatar, companion robot in Korea, I can hug and feed my dog. And I can feel all the joy of being right next to my dog back home in South Korea. It all comes to the concept called metamobility. By connecting robots to metaverse, we'll be able to move freely between both worlds. The smart factory is actually a uh, great example of how humans, robots, and the metaverse all come together. We're not just going to look at a camera view of a factory floor, for example. We're actually going to sit there and be part on the floor working with the workers and robots and machines. And as these digital worlds and physical worlds merge, we are creating this entirely new platform layer, which we call the metaverse. We as Microsoft are building this platform based upon the Microsoft Cloud. We're building together or bringing together Azure IoT, Azure Digital Twins, various dynamics capabilities like connected spaces, and last but not least, Microsoft Mesh, which we just announced last October at Ignite. We've been using Spot to build digital twins by mounting scanner sensors on its back, and it can go around our customer sites and very reliably capture the data you need to build a very realistic digital twin. The other thing that we've done to get started on the vision you've described is used immersive uh, systems where an operator is immersed in a space, not only with their eyes, but also with their hands. And at the other end, there's a robot that's doing precise manipulation because you have this very direct connection, even though there's a, a network in between, between the two. It's a great way to begin dreaming about the future together. I'd like to thank you all so much for